Hey team, uh, Tom and Liam here from PH Nutrition. Um, today we're going to answer uh, a kind of common question, but also related to a theme that we've seen uh, Steve and the guys talk about before. And this is all about, you know, being time efficient. So I know the coaches have often get asked, you know, about training on limited time, how to structure your sessions, how to be really efficient. So we think we'd approach it from a nutrition point of view is how do you maybe stay on plan, or you know, keep uh, keep your diet in, in a good place if you're got limited or kind of borrowed time. Um, rather than all or nothing approach, a few strategies that you can put in place. Um, so we're going to talk about some common issues that we see. Um, we're going to go through some very simple meal and snack prep ideas. Um, we're going to talk through two potential options that you could use, which are no cook meals and component cooking. Uh, we're going to talk about outsourcing it. Um, and again, another common question we get asked when it, when it comes to kind of food prep and meal prep is, is it bad to eat the same thing every day? Uh, and then just to wrap up with, we're going to talk about uh, a new program that we've got on the hub, which is our meal prep program. So uh, common issues. Um, these are some of the things that we see uh, pop up. Um, number one, I think, is, is always down to what we would say is maybe poor time management. Now, well, for one reason or another, whether it's a work-life balance, whether, whether whether you've got kids, sometimes nutrition can just get pushed maybe a little bit to, towards the towards the uh, end of the priority list, so to speak. I mean, um, Liam, you're you're a new, you're a new dad. Um, I mean, is it something that, that you know, and, and obviously working as a coach as well, that people kind of like struggle to kind of fit it in and, and find that find the right time when it comes to their nutrition? Yeah, I, I definitely think so, mate. It's you know, kind of Steve uh, spoke about this on the on the YouTube video. Um, it is top time poor time management, and you have to adjust and you have to prioritize, say, certain areas. But nutrition should be something that, um, if you can, like you say, get the correct system in place, um, you know, like and not try to do too much in one go, then that kind of takes care of the time management issue. So, you know, for me, I used to spend a lot more time prepping food and, and cooking maybe new recipes and bits and pieces so I had to adjust you know my thing and uh, my setup and streamline things a little bit more so as we'll go into in a minute like I had to simplify my kind of lunches and and, and snacks for sure because they were more grab and go I didn't have time to kind of sit down it was more like okay instead of like a bowl of food or whatever I took it into wraps um because I could eat them on the go or eat them mm. quickly um and I had to adjust like the prep that we do. So now I like here, one of the issues is trying to do too much. Like we don't have to meal prep on a Sunday or a Thursday, like 10 meals at a time. You know, what it was, it was just trying to like, kind of streamline stuff, maybe cooking a little bit extra, buying some no cook meals, which we'll come on to. And uh, like I say, just maybe adjusting my expectations, but adjusting my, my priorities to ensure that although nutrition is now not, one of the highest priorities that I have, you know, on my list, it's about making sure that I don't go to the extreme and just disregard it completely. So, um, yeah, it is about kind of getting these second and second and third points uh, nailed down uh, and that'll take care of uh, your time management. Yeah, hopefully that's what we're going to be able to give people today is, is like say, some systems, some some strategies. And it's like, say, whether whether it's training, whether it's nutrition, whether it's whatever we do, sometimes it is about kind of picking the battles and deciding, right, I can, I can invest time here and use a couple of strategies, but actually sometimes like, I'm going to outsource this. Like a, a simple life, a life lesson that, that we've found is like employing a cleaner sounds like a big expensive thing, but if it takes that job away and it gives me more time to do something else, then that's a win for me. And it's the same with maybe something like your nutrition. It's the same with, you know, some of your, you're paying to someone have a program you're training for you. It's exactly the same. It's picking, picking the battles and, um, and, and choosing what to do. And I think bland meals is something I see a lot as well, particularly sometimes with meal prep, like the old chicken, broccoli and rice. Yeah. Um, it's not very inviting. You have to eat the same kind of thing three, four, five days in a row. So I think that's something to, to always to bear in mind when it comes to meal prep is it doesn't have to be boring. Yeah, it does, you're absolutely right. It doesn't have to be boring. Some of your meals look you know, incredible with different varieties of colors and et cetera. But one thing I do want to, to touch on before we move on is you've got to understand that sometimes we need to take the emotion out of food and food 
just needs to be fuel. It needs to be something that does the job, not this gourmet five star sitting down. Every mouthful is unbelievable. Um, every time, sometimes it does need to be functional, especially for training quite regularly, maybe double days, multiple times, you know, like, uh, like six days a week. Sometimes food needs to be that because if it is, if it's just functional and you can, you know, streamlined, it can be just something that you just do as opposed to like this whole ceremony and this emotional thing, you know, and I think a lot of people get that, get that mixed up. Like, you know, yeah. because it's functional doesn't mean it has to be bland. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely think that sometimes guys, especially like some meals where maybe you're eating by yourself and not as a family at breakfast or lunch or snacks or whatever, they can just be functional as opposed to like emotional. And I think that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, these these again are like nothing on here is is kind of is too gourmet. Yeah. Um, these are things that we've yeah. um, often talked to clients about. And I mean, we'll, we'll start with breakfast. Um, you know, things like overnight oats is something that you could prep one day at a time, but it's something actually you could make multiple days of. But also, very easily, you could have a kind of base of that meal, whether it's like the oats, the protein powder, etc., the yogurt. But then you can change around with the toppings. You can add different fruits in. You can add different nuts and seeds to just give it some variety. Same with things like yogurt bowls. Again, you know, change the fruits around, change the nuts and seeds, make it a little bit interesting. Um, something like a frittata can be a, a great option where, or, or like egg muffins, those kind of things can be, um, can be quite simple to kind of prep up. Um, and then, you know, you've got then kind of multiple days or it works really well as a, as a snack i think sometimes preparing our snacks is something that a lot a lot of people maybe don't think about doing as much yeah. um, and that's where they kind of then get caught short and they'll just grab something on the go or maybe they don't eat at all and then they're chasing themselves later in the day so you know on the hub we've got recipe packs you know for for around prepping your snacks at home and again it's it's so you you i know personally like if i prep a few snacks and i'm just so grateful that i haven't got to then think about what I'm going to have, I haven't got to waste time preparing it, having some, making some, you know, some raw balls, even, you know, I'd say, boiling six, six, 10, 12 eggs off at a time, things like that is really useful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of those, like, main meal options there, like, are they things you've, you've used with clients before? Oh, mate, like, this list, I'm telling you, like, for 75% of people is all that we need. If you need, you know, the main meals is, you know, maybe, like, say, a, a couple of kind of meal prep options there. If we chucked in a couple of no-cook meals, which we're going to come into in a minute, then you've got the basics. Like we don't make a new recipe every single time. Like a lot of people just make six recipes and just adjust them. So I think one of the biggest things is getting breakfast and snacks nailed. I think if you, it's such a simple thing to do. And if you're short on time, if you box those two off, they're really quick to do. You know, lunches and dinners take a bit more time. So if you're short on time, just go and, and, and get that low hanging fruit of like, I'm going to do my breakfast and I'm going to do my snacks. Mm -hmm. And then you can maybe kind of say pick lunches up or do dinners on the fly or whatever. But like, if you nail those two things, it will make a huge difference because often those are the ones that are kind of around workouts, you know, yeah. pre-workout, post-workout breakfast or snacks going into evening workouts or afternoons. And if you, if you nail those and get those ones, I say that work for you, then if you're short on time, I would hundred percent streamline and prioritize those two. Yeah, I guess you're right, because those evening meals will have a little bit more time potentially uh, to prep. Um, but something like a slow cooker, I think, is great if you're someone who trains in the evening, because wow. that's something you can put on in the morning or uh, put on at lunchtime and then to come home and then you know, dinner's cooked and prepared. And you can obviously scale that up, make a few more portions and maybe uh, swap potatoes for rice or you know ch change the carb sauce around. So it kind of adds a little bit of variety. And um, and particularly things like chilies and curries, I'm I'm a big fan of getting people to eat because you can sneak veg in. Ah, yeah. Like if, if you're not a big kind of veg person, like you can grate it, you can wilt it right down, so it's kind of not blend even it. there. My blend mom it does, in. My mum does the my mum does like a cottage pie and she blends like carrots and courgettes and something else and makes the sauce of the of the the chili in it or, or of the meat. And uh, man, it's like thick and lovely, it's so good. But they like say. If you don't like veg and the actual texture of it, which is sometimes a bit of an issue, like mushrooms is a bit of a weird texture for people, you know, courgettes or whatever it is, stick it in a blender with a bit of stock, whiz it down and use that as, it, as the base of your sauce. And then like say, 
happy days to hear all the colours in there. Although yeah, lovely. It look brown, although it will look brown, it will be happy. <laughs> it so, it will well, taste good. It will taste great. good. Lovely. Um, oh, yeah. Well, by the way, the oh, last one there I, I didn't bring up was, um, have you seen, uh, I think the brand is Maggie, um, and they do these like chicken and fish in a bag. So, again, like so easy. You can get, you know, chicken breast or chicken thigh. You can chuck a load of veg in. The seasoning's pretty good, like it's not too high in kind of salt or sugar, fat or anything. Yeah. Whack it in the bag, shake it up, pop it in the oven, like 40 yeah. minutes later. Yeah. You know, again, it's, it's not bland. It tastes really good. Yeah. You know, calorie, calories work out well for those kind of sachets. They're, they're really good options as well. They do, they do the same for fish. That's great, Tim. Love that. Super. Uh, right, next up, component cooking. Um, Liam introduced me uh, to this um, earlier on in the year. And for, for myself and then every other kind of client that, I, that I've spoken to about it, they've, again, um, really taken this on board and found it so beneficial, again, to one in terms of a different way to approach meal prep, but also it gives a little bit more variety. It's not bland. You're not eating potentially the same thing day after day. Mm. Um, so we make a batch of something. Um, and actually, we can even cheat and buy something even pre-bought potentially as well. And then we can use it throughout the week to kind of build your meals. So you've got a little bit of like a, a pH nutrition approved pick and mix going on. There you go. Um, <laughs> so it can be flexible. We're going to minimize food waste and maintain variety. So we need, a, we need a protein source. Now, we've said cook, but actually you could even outsource this by buying like a whole cooked chicken from the supermarket. Yeah. Um, you could buy like... Uh, Pre-cooked, yeah, pre-cooked fish, anything like that would be great. Um, cook vegetables off. Now, for, for me and my clients, when we're trying to maybe get a bit more veg in, maybe particular at lunch, having kind of pre-cooked or part-cooked veg off is then really easy. Like you can make, you can whip up an omelet really quickly. You can mix it in with some grains. You can throw it into a salad. Like if it's there in the fridge, it will prompt you to have it as well. Yeah. Um, we then need some, some carbohydrates. Uh, and then we can begin to uh, to build our meals. So on the hub, there is a, a nice little download that you can get. Um, and like, here's an example of how we can literally, you know, work left to right and and pick, uh, maybe pick like one or two protein options. You could do a couple of veg options, um, you know, one carb, and then and then to add your fats to build your meal. And even if you don't want to do all three steps or four steps, like even doing maybe the protein and the veg. I think yeah. is a really, really good option for people. Yeah, I think I think you're like absolutely right, mate. I, we we put this together because I'm just like it just it's so simple. Pick off the pick off of a column, you know, add two veg, add one or two carbs, and add some fats. And I'm, you know, say people can get overwhelmed with recipes if they don't have an ingredient or you know they couldn't get it at the supermarket, and that's kind of why we don't do strict meal plans as well. Like we want that flexibility. Um, so like I say, component cooking allows you to cook individual things and build meals and that gives you variety. You can top it within the spices, different dips, different sauces, you know, through the week. Uh, or you can cook, you can even break it down and just do one component cooking mm. through the week. So you can cook all your protein off like fajita chicken in the, you know, in the slow cooker and then have it with rice, have it with sweet potato wedges, have it in tacos, have it with just veg or have it in a burrito. And all of a sudden, there's your four meals in different times, like through the week. So yeah, that's amazing. what I want. That's why we want people to kind of use component cooking. My last point on this is this is a fantastic option if you cook for multiple different people in the house. Okay, so like you know, you've got dad who eats a lot more, you got mum who wants certain things, and then you got like maybe like. I don't know, a kid who doesn't want this and, you know, you end up making three, four meals and we see this with clients all the time. Or you've got like partners who want different things. Like if you cook all of the individual things, you can easily do different portion sizes or you can cater for different tastes. So like if someone wants a different, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like hummus or I don't like the avocado or whatever. If it's in... Swap it out. Yeah, if it's in in the recipe, you can't change it. Like you made a risotto, you made a risotto. Whereas if you've got component cooking, you can build your own meals uh, in the right portions. And I think this is a wicked idea for people that have multiple different um, kind of uh, um, requirements in the house. Yeah, and again, like you say, we've got 
you know, really, like I say, almost outsourcing options again, things like cans of, of tuna and mackerel, you know, um, again, like you haven't got to cook the chicken, you could buy that, buy that cooked. Things like, you know, prawns can come cooked, even some of the, the carb options, you know, you can get oh, microwavable yeah. packs of rice and, and grains and things like that. So it's, it, it can, it's not, it's just that little bit of planning, a little bit of uh, awareness of, of what you're going to use and when. But like I say, I, I love the idea of being able to actually, well, I don't like sweet, so-and-so doesn't like sweet potato. Okay, we'll um, have some noodles with it instead. I think that's really cool. That's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, next up, we'll talk about no-cook meals. Um, so these are pretty handy if, uh, if you need a quick lunch or dinner. And again, this is about thinking about like food as function rather than pleasure. Like Liam said, like it's just got to fill a purpose, but we don't just want to be our all or nothing. Like it's not, re you know, there's, there's a lot of options out there. Maybe uh, spend just a little bit longer in the supermarket next time you go in, go up and down those aisles um, and just see actually what you can get in terms of, you know, calorie wise. A lot of things now are really high protein. Even if you buy plant-based meals, you can still add your protein to it to get more veg in your diet. I think there's loads of good options out there but kind of following that, that same framework, you know, like, is it going to give me enough calories overall? If not, I need to make it bigger or maybe a bit smaller. Has it got enough protein? Do I need to add some protein to it? Has it got enough color? You know, and, and you're never going to hit it bang on. Like I see people stressing about, oh, I'm five grams over on my fat or I'm three grams under on my carbs. Like it's what we do on average, isn't it? So, but this is going to get us pretty close to where we want to be. Um, you know, some of my, you know, favorite kind of options for directing people to it, normally the Tesco or Sainsbury's is where most people shop, yeah. relatively speaking, you know, um, brands like, uh, Bowl, you can pick up a really great, um, Tesco do a really good kind of plant based range. So again, you can add your protein to it. Most supermarkets do these, um, like Spanish omelet, like Spanish frittatas, which are great for snacks as well as meals. Like, and you can literally choose if you want a quarter or a third or all of it. Yeah. Um, these soulful one pot meals, you know, microwave meals that are actually packed full of good ingredients and you know, the calories are really good. There's not too much salt, sugar, fat. And then you, I'm seeing now more like well-known brands coming into the supermarket. So I know Leon have now launched into Sainsbury's. So they've got a really good range in there. And even like the frozen section as well can be yeah. really good for like some, some ready meals and, uh, and things to have. Again, we don't want to be spending half an hour in the kitchen at lunchtime if we're working from home or say if we're on the go we're actually if you know right there's a tesco near my place of work i can go in i've got three or four options that i know work for me i could pick that up whack it in the microwave back in the office and i'm good to go yeah but like you say it's improving the food quality isn't it rather than yeah rather than going out and, and spending you know these, these options and often people look at them and go oh it's like three pound or two pound and or two pound fifty for a little pot and I'm just like, you don't get change out of like a tenner if you're going out and getting like a wrap or a, I don't know something else from from a, a lot of these kind of delis or whatever. So stocking up, you know, soul food, they, they they're two pound a pot. Like if you bought five of them and a bit of cooked protein, you know, you're spending basically like fifteen to fifteen quid for the week. Yeah. So it's like three pound a lunch, like, you know, and it's really good quality. So you've got to be looking at, say, just using these options. And there's so many, you, you said, right, like you've got to spend a tiny bit of time hunting these out, but these ones are fantastic. I snack on, we, we, we snack on that Spanish omelet. Like I've done that for about two years now. <laughs> it's so but it, but, it's but so that's the thing, like if you identify and you know, it works for you, it's just, it becomes yeah. a go-to meal. And, this is something I, I yeah, kind of really pulled out of a, of a social media post that I did again, just, just about building your meal. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. this could form a really good, I mean, you could use this as meal prep. You can prep this up the night before and take it with you. Or like say, if you need a quick dinner, particularly like say people training in the evening and they come home and they think they've got to spend an hour in the kitchen. No, you haven't. You can whip up a really quick, a quick nutritious meal, you know, some pre-cooked protein, you know, fish, salmon, chicken, um, some pre-cooked carbohydrates, you know, we've got uh, lentil options, we've got rice, you can get like carrot and swede mash, loads of good options, you know, get some color in. For me, like spinach is the easiest thing to kind of just throw in something or throw on top of something. And then if you need a bit more fat, you can always add nuts or seeds or a little bit of dressing or, or hummus uh, and, and you're done, you know, and you look at that, you know, if you put that in a big bowl, mix it all together, like we've got everything we need and we've got plenty of color as well, which is great. Yeah, one of the, the bag of spinach, I do that. And then ones I'm doing at the moment is uh, they buy, you can get buy like um, pre-cooked or pre-grated slaw, coleslaw bags 
of like carrot, white cabbage, red cabbage, something else. Um, and it's like a quid and it's like a big bag and bag of stir fry bed as well. You can get, mm. and you don't even have to cook it, just whack it in. And like you say, with a bit of sauce or whatever, and it adds so much color, so much, uh, you know, crunch and texture. Um, like I say, super easy pick off again, pick off the list. You're done within five minutes. You're eating down, eating a nutrition meal that tastes good. Rather yeah. Than, they say it doesn't have to be yeah and you're going to pick the things that say you want to enjoy rather than for like a generic bland meal meal plan that oh it's just chicken and white rice again like no you can pick what you like and, and make it work for you perfect um outsourcing so again again we might look at it on the faces and go god it's a lot of money or oh, i don't know about that but again it's about that time management and you haven't got to outsource three meals a day seven days a week you could if you want to, but you could just outsource like three, uh, three evening meals a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, let someone else do the work for you. I think you've, generally we've got two main options. We could use a meal prep company or we could use like a meal delivery service company. Yeah. Um, so things like HelloFresh uh, and Gusto and Mindful Chef, um, you know, they will, you can choose you know, uh, how many meals you want per week. You can choose if you want things like quick cook meals, if you want um, uh, like plant-based meals, if you want vegetarian meals, there's loads of options. And you can see on the website as well, like how many calories in each meal. So it, it, yeah. you can literally pick exactly what you want. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of takes that kind of little bit of decision stress. It turns up at your door, you haven't got to go to the food shop for it. Um, and I think also it teaches you because you get the recipe cards if you like them, you can use them again, which I find it so simple. I mean, Liam, obviously, uh, you and you and the missus and, and little boy at home, like, do you still use uh, any of these options? Or Yeah, we, we went through HelloFresh. They had, like, an uh, intro offer. So both both of these guys, like, they have normally, like, 50% off or 35% off your first month. And you do the, you do the maths. It's about £4, £3 a meal, you know, like so you're looking at if it's a two it's only one pound fifty a meal like it's ridiculous if you get the offers you know so we've done this on a, on a couple of months in a row and then like you say we just then streamlined it down to use gusto two nights a week three nights a week so we used it on like a wednesday and a thursday because we'd kind of prep a little bit from from the weekends and then by the end of the week we were just like you know what i can't really be bothered to cook and also the stuff in the fridge is starting to kind of go off so instead of buying extras and then chucking a lot of food away, which we ended up doing, we saved the money, got the thing, didn't have to think about it, you know, and all of a sudden then you're kind of ready to cook again at the weekend. So mm. guys, like check out, like, there's deals on the hub, there's always deals on online, so check out HelloFresh and Gusto. And it's so good, like you can, like there's 10 minute meals on Gusto, 10 minutes. Yeah, they're really yeah. good. We've got those cards and we still make those, like one of them was fish tacos. My God, it was so good. <laughs> Basically, whack everything in a pan and stick it in a wrap. It was, but it was so nice the way they did it. Yeah. And you think of doing it and, like you say, pick these up. And often people think that they're way too expensive. But break it down and don't think that you have to use it on every single meal. And what you'll find is that it's probably around 50 to 75% cheaper than getting on delivery. So I would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never get changed out of 20 quid off delivery. So, <laughs> um. And something like, um, like a meal prep company. I mean, I, I put balanced meals up there, but obviously, mm. you know, meal prep companies are, are here, there and everywhere. I mean, again, it might seem a little bit expensive, but if you're someone who, I don't know, gets up, trains early, is in the office all day, goes to the gym again in the evening, comes home late at night, like, the last thing maybe you want to be thinking about is, is food prep and grabbing food on the go. And again, you, you could do like a three or four day a week option. Yeah. You yeah. haven't got to do it, you know, three meals, seven days a week. So, you know, again, let someone else do it for you. And, and it may seem expensive, but actually the last time, like say, the last time you went into Tesco and grabbed the lunch on the go, how much did it very quickly add up to? So it's, it's, it's just about weighing it up, isn't it? Yeah. hundred percent. Super. Um, just to quickly touch on as we're talking about meal prep and, uh, um, and kind of eating maybe similar meals, something that we often get asked about is to eat like the same thing every day. Um, this is a common question. Um, we actually believe it could actually be a bit of a key to unlock some progress. Um, obviously, it's, it is all about context. I mean, 
Uh, Liam, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it across to you before I before I come back in with my thoughts on it. But yeah. do you think it's good to eat the same thing, or is it good to eat similar things, or should we be eating different meals every day? Like, what's your take on it? So I think that when we when we said about the key to making progress, I think that it is a really positive thing to do at certain times. Okay, especially if you're maybe starting out with a nutrition plan, or if you've hit a bit of a plateau um, and you know you kind of need to kind of figure out how to kind of take the next step because it allows you to be aware of what works look us nutritionists love to kind of say find what works for you like you know but it's how how do you actually do that i think if you be consistent i don't necessarily need to eat the same thing i think you need to eat similar things um and again it doesn't need to be bland it could be good quality but what that does is it allows you to go tom mate um, i feel so tired after my lunch you know, and, and you're like, okay, well, if your lunch is random every single day, one day you ate a chicken katsu curry from the local deli and other times you ate a smoothie and one time you had a protein bar because you was in a meeting, it's in inconsistent, so we can't figure out what works. So if you're consistent with what you eat, it allows you to refine your choices, it allows you to be aware of what works and figure out something that's a, easy to do uh, and is going to allow you to train well feel better improve digestion improve energy levels you know and i I, and i think it could be the key to them making progress so i think that eating similar things is the key amazing amazing yeah it's it's an interesting one it's an interesting one isn't it because i think on the face of it people would go well no it it, we've spoken about eating bland meals and don't eat the same thing but actually it i think it gives you direct feedback isn't it yeah. It's very easy to track if you're over something or, or under something. I know that personally. And yeah. I think, yeah, like afternoon cravings or mid-morning cravings, things like that, energy levels. I think that's instant feedback where we could look at someone and go, well, actually, if that's always your lunch, swap this out, change that out, and, and you may see some um, some progress as well. And, you know, we, the goal always here is what we're talking about is like it's performing well. And if we're going to the gym like feeling a bit sluggish or feeling a bit bloated, like, work back why is that what what are we having so yeah if, if you start to eat you know go to meals then i think um i think yeah you can start to identify if there is anything that needs changing that's that's where we could start yeah like i say it, it's all of these points are so valid and um we have a blog on uh we have a blog article up so you go go over to the website guys check that out um and it's when we talk about performance, yeah, we're talking about performance in the gym, but we've all had that afternoon slump or mid morning slump, you know, and that shouldn't be the norm. Like that's not a normal thing to experience. So you need to, as Tom said, work back. So if you always get a mid morning slump at 10 30, 11 o'clock, then well, let's work back from your breakfast and figure out that if you're having overnight oats or a yogurt bowl, or is the balance of macros correct? Is the overall intake correct? Is the food choices correct? you know, working for you and make these small tweaks and adjustments because that's how you figure out what works. Um, so we're talking about performing across the day, not just in the gym. Um, and, and it's really crucial. Like Tom, when you were doing the plant-based to kind of like, you know, really kind of honing in on those 30 days, mm. obviously you must've been really consistent because having the variety every single day is quite challenging. So did you find that when you kind of really honed things down and got consistency, did you see that there were some positive changes? Uh, yeah, definitely in regards to that like mid afternoon period. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. fairly simply, like in terms of for me, it was just calories. Mm. Like I just wasn't eating enough at lunch. So like two hours later, I would feel hungry, my concentration would dip, and I almost feel like God, oh, if like if I lay down, I'm gonna fall asleep. Yeah. Whereas like that was like the biggest change for me. I was like, no, I'm good. Like I'm pushing through. Like and again, I would have a bigger snack again as well, like a mini meal in the afternoon and. Just, just being aware of actually where I was, where I was underestimating what I was eating made, made a massive difference for me there. Like you're, you're right there, that afternoon, that slump, that, that, that craving of food. Like when I hear people say to me, like, oh, I'm, I'm a snacker, I'm constantly snacking, you know, I'm always like that. I'm just like, all I hear is like, you're not eating enough in main meals. Yeah. Like that's all it says to me. As soon as you, people say this, I'm a grazer, I can't stop snacking. I'm yeah. just like, you're not eating enough in the main Yeah, meal. they're almost afraid to eat a bigger meal, but then they're... Yeah. A hundred percent. Back in the fridge one hour later. Yeah. A 200 calorie. Oh, I don't want to eat too much at lunch. I'm going to feel really sluggish and have no energy. <laughs> okay. So you eat like 200 calories and then like you say, an hour later, you're back and forth to that fridge about four times in the afternoon. 
Yeah. So if you bump that to 250 calories, so 450 calories even, more than you're eating now, I guarantee it's going to make you feel a lot better, perform a lot better. So yeah, like you say at the bottom there, Tom, great point. If everything's random, how are you meant to identify what worked and what didn't? Look, it's like, it's like training. If you just if you were squatting and you was like, right, one week I'm going to do 10 reps, next week I'm going to do two reps, next week I'm going to do 28 reps, you know, <sighs> Okay, yeah, you, you might be, you might, you know, it's like throwing a dart. You might, okay, you might hit a little bit of progress, but if you structured it, like I said, refined it and, and kind of worked on it, I think you can make a lot more progress. Lovely. Um, in terms of like missing out, like, do you feel that if we, so on the flip side, like any kind of negatives to it, just very briefly, do you think... Yeah like eating the same thing we could we could miss out on certain nutrients or or do you feel like people will generally box off or do people kind of end up going down a rabbit hole sometimes stressing about vitamins and minerals in their diet or yeah i think obviously it's like anything it's like any diet can be done in the correct way or the wrong way and the same with this like you can eat the same thing every day and do it incorrectly like if i was smashing pizza every day and you know and just a piece of bread and jam for for breakfast then I'm going to miss out on a lot of nutrients. And, uh, but if I, you know, have a certain meal or a couple of meals for lunch and I have a certain snack and I have a certain dinner that I rotate and make small tweaks to, and I know that I'm getting a variety of protein sources, a variety of colors, a variety of carbohydrates, I'm kind of boxing off most nutrients there. It's just that those meals are the same. You know, if I was just eating chicken, rice and broccoli, then yes, I'm going to be missing out on, on certain things. So I don't think that eating the same thing naturally, you know, makes you miss out on, on uh, certain nutrients. Just like being vegan doesn't mean that you're going to be deficient in vitamin D and B12 in iron. Like if you do it in the correct way uh, and, and be sensible with it, you can be absolutely fine. Yeah, spot on. And I think it's just a reminder as well, like every meal doesn't have to be that five-star Gordon Ramsay-esque like gourmet meal like like we've touched on it's about eating for function and eating for pleasure and maybe like say breakfast lunch and snacks are kind of their function they're around your training or you know they need to be quick and go to that those staples and then when you've got time that can be something then where you can you know make something a little bit more enjoyable it might be an evening meal it might be or friday night you know saturday breakfast whatever you know we all have different weeks so that's just, I think, a big takeaway. This for hopefully people is like, you know, it hasn't got to be gourmet five star. You've got to get Instagram filter on every plate of food you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, mate. No one wants to see a picture of my food. It's horrible. <laughs> it looks like a big bowl of mess. I mean, nothing Instagram worthy at all. Yeah, um, you know, we talk about stress cup, don't we? We talk about, you know, we we got training stress. We got stress of kids. Perhaps we got job. We got finances. We got what you know whatever's going on in the world like some we don't need to add more layers of stress by worrying about our nutrition sometimes so outsourcing it is a great option doing a little bit of meal prep doing some uh, doing some component cooking but we don't have to be all in like the the key here is is is, is just like I say is picking the right the right strategy so maybe like say with meal prep rather than trying to do like six days all in one go again it's about learning how to do it so We've, uh, we've developed a really nice course on the hub that gives you simple methods, uh, gives you some really nice kind of tips and tricks to, to streamline your meal prep. And it's drip fed as well. It's not, yeah. here's how to do it. Off you go. You know, you sign up through the hub. It's delivered, uh, delivered through the app. Is that right, Liam? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you get a, you get a nice a shopping guide because again, we need to be organized. If we're going to prep, we've got to have the ingredients in. We've got to have, you know, what we need to make those meals some nice easy meal prep ideas because sometimes it is good to to add a bit of variety we've all got our go-tos but maybe trying something new now and again will you know kind of galvanize us to, to give it a go and each week it like I say it's drip fed we've got different lessons uh, on how to kind of on how to meal prep on how to prep your snacks um, uh, and things like that as well so there's options there for breakfast lunch dinner um, and and snacks as well and again it, you haven't got to do all of it it could just be at the end of the course you pick the option that helps you out the most in your in your week yeah it's it is i'm really proud of this course it's it breaks it down doesn't just say like oh you got to spend six hours on, on a weekend like it's really simple tips covers a lot of what we spoke about today but gives you links and options and tools and tricks and stuff like that to really think do you know what 
if I picked up three or four things out of the month, you're going to make incredible progress. And, you know, like I say, rather than just dumping you with a, you know, four weeks worth of content in one hit and you've got to work through it all, it does drip feed it. So you can just have it kind of murmuring along in the background and you'll be like, oh, do you know what? That's a really good tip for, for sourcing the snacks or that's a really good tip for breakfast ideas. Um, so we break down strategies, give you really simple things. So, you know, the, the meal prep ideas are really good because I put in recipes for two servings, three servings, four servings and five. So if you wanted to make like you and your partner dinner and then there's one extra for lunch, there's three servings. Do you know what I mean? Like rather than just like everything, six servings. We kind of broken it down so you can use these different strategies. So hopefully it's going to be a, a really beneficial for people. Nice, sounds good. Sounds good. I might have to get on that myself. Um, so yeah, to, to summarise, like tools in the toolbox. So what we mean by that is, you know, it's good to have options, but we don't have to use all of the options, all of the tools, all of the time. It's knowing when to when to pick the right things out uh, that that work well for you. So. Like I said, it could be, you know, two or three nights a week, we're going to use uh, Gusto or HelloFresh uh, and they're going to, you know, worry about what we have for dinner. It may be that actually once a week, I'm going to do a little bit of component cooking because then I've got some protein and some veg sorted for, for lunch. And then all I've got to do is, is add my carbs in. The, the simplest meal prep option for me is always like dinner is lunch. So like I say, you've got cooking for two mouths at home you you are planning that you're going to cook an extra portion you get the tupperware out as you're as you're plating dinner up one plate two plate tupperware lunch yeah. sorted for tomorrow yeah mate i i think let's say you've identified that that works for you you, you now you're on to prepping your snacks again like you build these you build these kind of um habits and, and you'll be fine like mine is the slow cooker like it's just stick something in the slow cooker and you've got bases there of a whole meal or a protein source or protein and a carb source, whatever you need or protein fat source. And then just buy the cooked stuff, buy cooked rice, <laughs> buy pre-prepared stuff. You're just boxing off things so much easier. You know, we've really streamlined that. And a slow cooker for me is a, is an absolute game changer for a lot of people, like people with, with kids, bits of people like that. It's, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, monitor it. You don't have to kind of uh, be around. You can just leave it. Yeah. And if, 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 you know, for us, if like the little one needs a feed or whatever, instead of like being a set time, you got to eat, you can just let it bubble along for a little bit longer, you know? So it's a really, really, it's a really been a game changer for us. So highly recommend that for all new, new, new parents. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Just the, those strategies during the week, isn't it? It's just, I say identifying and and you don't got to go all in on all of these strategies we've talked about it is like a little bit of trial and error uh you know pick pick one option to begin with you know maybe sign up to the meal prep program and mm. and just you know work through that for um uh, for a couple of weeks and uh, see how you go rather than trying to uphaul and, and change everything all at once we're about lowering stress here we're not about you know increasing stress and, and massive shopping lists and things like that so uh so yeah you know Pick, pick a meal that's gonna gonna help you out the best for me it like recently working from home more that no cook lunch has been a massive game changer for me because now i'm eating enough but also like the quality's got a lot better through things like you know uh you like like pre-cooked grains um adding spinach in stuff like that just makes it you know a big meal but a nourishing meal as well yeah yeah good stuff mate good stuff i think we'll wrap it up there then we'll uh we'll let people uh go get the shopping list out and sign up to the meal prep uh, program on the hub. And uh, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching everybody. Uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Great stuff, mate. Super.